couple of 12. Uh, Father, I thank you for your glory. Thank you for your people, Father. Thank you for your church. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of knowing you. Thank you, Lord, that you've called us to a great and a wondrous future, Lord. Thank you that you've called us to, to lay our lives down for you and your kingdom. Lord, thank you that your glory rests on us as your people, Father. There is no king but Jesus, no God but Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we will have no king but Jesus, Lord. Thank you for the wonder of the church. Thank you for the wonder of the glory of the gospel, Lord. There is no God but you. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for uh, these days, God. Thank you that we live in this country, Lord. Thank you for the freedom we have as a church to be and do what you've called us to do, Lord. Thank you that, that we can still operate uh, um, openly and preach the gospel and be believers openly, Lord God, as anywhere we want to be, Lord. We thank you for the freedom. There are some people in some countries that have no freedom to be what you've called them to be, Lord. And we thank you for this freedom. And uh, Sorry about my cat in the background. It's having some fun there. And, uh, um, but Lord, we thank you for the glory that is ours in you. Father, we, I pray that you'll continue to pour out your spirit upon us in a powerful, powerful way, Lord. Open our eyes more and more to the wonder of the gospel, more and more to the wonder of who you are, that we may see you high and lifted up. Amen. 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 So I just, uh, um, you know, today here at home, we have a friend of ours, and he's busy installing some security stuff uh, uh, around the house and upgrading this and upgrading that and putting some beams across my daughter's windows that he found in his garage. And friends, you know, I want to I tell you this. Uh, um, this guy is involved in the security business and uh, this kind of stuff, and he has said to Dawn and I that he wants to come and install the stuff free of charge. He wants to do it free just as a blessing to us. And, uh, and that is absolutely phenomenal and profound. And, and we just say, thank you, Jesus. He was here a little while ago. He, he said he's got some beams. You know, they're, about, they're about, you know, I don't know how, about uh, four feet, about two feet uh, wide or one and a half feet wide. Sorry about that. There he is. He's run away. And, uh, um, and he wants to put them across these open kind of these windows. I don't have burglar guards in my daughter's room. And, and she's often complained about feeling unsafe because someone can just break in. They, they, they wouldn't be able to just break through there, but, you know, but she's afraid that they've been able to break in while she's sleeping. And, and, and he's just said the one day, hey, he's got these, you'll look in his garage and scrounge around. He's got a lot of uh, secondhand equipment and, you know, security stuff, and he'll take, take a look and see what he's got. And then he said to me the one day uh, about, about two weeks ago, he said, I've, I've got the beams. And so he's come to install them uh, uh, today, and, uh, and then just upgrade our system. And someone else has, has given him uh, this system to install that upgrades our old system to this amazing system. So the, our, our old system had eight zones. This one can have up to 16 zones. It's just phenomenal. And we just go, wow, thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in the Glend household. Amen. And, and both these gentlemen, from the guy who's installing it, uh, some of the stuff to the guy who's given us the stuff and said, we want to just give you the stuff and we want to bless you with this. And we are going, oh my God, thank you, Father. Uh, honestly, I mean, we're looking at a good couple of thousand rands worth of stuff. I mean, I don't know how much money it would cost if we had to pay the, the gentleman for his time and, his, and his, his, his labor here and then pay the other gentleman for the, for the, for the material, uh, um, how much it will be costing us. And we are being blessed through these two guys. So I want to say, Father, bless them and their businesses. Bless them, Father, beyond measure, Lord. I pray that you would continue to pour out your spirit upon their businesses and give them, give them open doors, Father, to great business opportunities just for their, just for their, their, um, their, their generosity towards us and our family. Bless them, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. But uh, in saying that, you know, as, as I saw this happening today, I thought, you know, that's interesting. I, I want to talk about this in our Delver 12 today and, and actually just m mention uh, in the Bible, in Psalm 127, verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. And, you know, so we've needed this upgrade in our, in our security for a while for various reasons. And this has come about where 
this is happening, and yet it's not costing us uh, financially. It has been done for us. And I, th and I thought, thought you know, prophetically, so many of us, it's like the Lord wants to do something in our lives when it comes to our security and it comes to our identity, when it comes to who we are. In other words, he wants to, he, there, is, there is safety and security that we need. But what happens is we try and find it outside of God. So last night at the delve at uh, at, uh, at our uh, um, uh, uh, at the at the oh my gosh come on Craig at the refuel I mentioned about idols and and I spoke about idols and I said how Abraham's father historically was known to have dealt in different idols and and how, how you know he was an idol seller you know in those days they had many different idols many different different things and. Uh, um, uh, uh, Matter of fact, there's somebody that we know that uh, has is, is, is cancer-free as we speak today. They were diagnosed with cancer. They've gone through some treatment. We've been praying for them as a church, and they're cancer-free. They have detected no cancer. And yet their family from the other side, who are Hindus, have said it's our gods that healed them, that healed her. We've been praying to our gods, and our gods healed her. And so I mentioned last night that Abraham had to forsake the gods of his fathers and lay hold of the one true God who called him out of the Chaldeans of Ur to go to a land he didn't know. Amen? And so, so many of us use different idols in our lives to bring safety and security to our souls because we're afraid of the future. And as, us, as this gentleman came today to install this equipment that's been given to us and say, no, I want to just do it as a blessing to you guys, I just felt the Lord say, this is what I want to do prophetically to my people. I want to be the one that provides for their safety and security. I don't want them to be stressing and using the idols of this world to patch up the things in their lives. I want to be the one who gets the glory. Not because God's a megalomaniac and an egomaniacal being that wants all this glory. Come on, worship me. I want the glory. God is God. There is no other but the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he alone will get the glory. He says that he will not share his glory with anything else. Amen? But so many of us reach, reach for things to bring, to, to bring safety and security. So listen what the psalmist says. He says, unless the Lord builds the house. The house, that word house in the, in the Hebrew is bayit. B-A-Y-R-T-H, it means family, home, or human body, or gathering of believers. Woo! The human body, gathering of believers, or just the family home. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. In vain means they're wasting their time. They're wasting their time. Unless the Lord builds, unless we build according to his pattern, unless he is the one who has told us what we need to do. Amen. There was only one way to build the ark, my friends. The way that God had given to Noah. There was no other way for Noah to build that ark. No other way. There was only one way. This was the pattern, Noah, that you were to build with. Amen. Many people are trying to build their own arks. Because of the storms that are coming or the storms that are buffeted by the winds and the waves, flown, blown around by every teaching, every, every, they're just blown around by all the news that's coming out of the, these articles or Facebook or news or overseas news, blown around by fear and anxiety and pressures on all sides. And so I've got to build my little flotation, flotation device. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house. The laborers build in vain. Prophetic picture of this gentleman working out. I'm here, able to do this. I said to him, I said to go inside uh, and I've got to do this, uh, um, you know, this, uh, the, uh, this, this live. I've got to do this thing. And he's like, no, no, go for it. Friends, it's like God wants to free us up to do his work while he builds the house. He's got to build. He's got to do this thing. Now, it doesn't mean, well, there's someone going to come fit stuff in my house for free, Craig. That's not the point. Dawn and I have been walking this road for 20 years. Amen? 
at the end of the day, it's a prophetic picture of someone else paying for it and coming to do the work of installing new stuff in our house to increase and up the safety of the Glen home. Amen. Isn't that just amazing? Even if that means no one is ever going to break through Jasmine's windows, ever, ever, because she has a sensor in a room that faces those windows from the inside. But she's afraid to sleep at night because they're big windows, maybe a meter and a half by a meter and a half, that have no burger guards on them. Two of them, solid pane windows. And she scares, so she said, told us for the last year and a half, if someone's going to come and can break in when I'm sleeping. Of course, they've got to smash the window right above her head or next door. She's going to hear them. But that's not the point. The point is she's afraid. So God in his kindness gets someone to come do some work and then goes, hey, I might have beams in my garage. Let me go check. Hey, I found two wonder. They, they look beautiful, brand new. They're, they're, they're wide, like 600 mils wide to fit in between over in right in the middle of these windows. So no one can ever. So if someone tries to go touch, touch the window when the alarm is set at nighttime, it'll set the alarm off. Forget about breaking it. They just got to break the beam. I said, we don't need that. Dawn and I don't need that. We don't need that outside. We don't need it. But the Lord says, I want that for your daughter's peace of mind. I want it to have it. So when she's sleeping at night, she can know the beams are armed. No one can come through those windows without setting the alarm off. Isn't that just beautiful of the heart of the Father? And yet we're not paying for it. Those beams have been laying in someone's garage for who knows a couple of years. He's tested them. He's got they're working 100%. I mean, look at that, my friends. They were sitting there. They had, they had the Glen name on them. He got them maybe from a job, I don't know how long ago, from a, set, a job that he pulled them off and upgraded whatever. They've been in this garage. And, and they had our name on it. The father said, those are earmarked for the Glen household. They're not going to cost the Glens anything. I'm putting them in that guy's garage for the Glens. I'm going to have them installed at no cost for the Glens. Isn't that just beautiful, my friends? Now, that can be any one of us. It doesn't have to be Craig and Dawn. It can be anyone. Unless the Lord builds a house, the laborers build in vain, my friends. Amen? Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen guard the city in vain. <laughs> Listen to that. Unless... The Lord watches over the city. The watchmen stand guard in vain. Isn't that just beautiful? Amen. It's like the Lord wants, he wants to be the one that watches over our households, that watches over our businesses, that watches over our families, that watches over the things that we love. And then listen to what he says here. He says, in vain, verse 2. In vain you rise early, in vain, okay, in vain, for nothing. You rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Now, it doesn't mean that, Craig, but I suffer from insomnia and every night, that night I can't sleep. Does that mean God doesn't love me? Of course he loves you. But the point is this, is that the sleep is supposed to be sweet. We're supposed to sleep in peace. You see, when I come, I wake up at two o'clock in the morning, and I'm afraid. And all of a sudden, now something comes to my mind. I can't sleep. I said, "Oh gosh, I can't sleep. I got to go." I remind myself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the holiness of God in Christ. Lord, you love me. You gave yourself for me. You left heaven to come here for me. I know, Father, that I've been sowing finances into your kingdom. I know that I've been giving into the things that you cherish. Your bride of Christ. Your bride. I know, Lord, that I've been sowing into your house. I've been watching over your house. I've been praying for your house. I've been praying for your people. Lord, thank you that you look after my house. Ah, oh, let me just go to sleep in peace. Amen? Is it easy? No, the temptation is there to be riled up, to be upset, and to be freaked out, and to be worried about the future. The temptation is there for all of us. But we have to harness those emotions and go, no, the Lord watches over my house. I, I remember working for this company many years ago. And for this guy, he was not saved. Man, when you got there at half past six in the morning because you had to be at a job early, there by seven o'clock on site, you know, so this guy was already there on his computer doing his thing. He was the owner of this company. He was already in his office, working, working. At six o'clock, when you got there at half past six, he's already in his office. 
Okay, granted he was single. And when you left, uh, you got back from, from site late that night, at like quarter to six, you got back to the, the office. Let's say quarter to 5.45, 6 o'clock, you come back from, uh, from Richards Bay or from somewhere or, or from Durban North or from, uh, you know, wherever. And you got back to the office at 6 o'clock that evening. And you, and you put everything down, you're going to come be back, in the, back there at 7 o'clock the next morning. You know he's in his office, working in his office at 6 o'clock. 12-hour days, hey, pushing the pencil, pushing the envelope, 12, 13, 14-hour days, working hard for his company. The Bible says, friends, in vain you rise up early and stay up late. Now, hard work is a great thing. Amen? But if that characterizes your life, rising up early and staying up late to make the ends meet, to clap it, to make sure that you've got enough and to, to build your empire, friends, we're missing the point of life. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen watch in vain. Unless the Lord builds a house, the bull is built in vain. Amen? I want to encourage you today, as you go out to work, as you look after your family, as you work every day, Let's build into the kingdom of God. Let's sow into what God is doing. As I said last night, and I hope my message that came across wasn't too tough and too hard. And, you know, I shared it with as much pastoral juice as I could let flow. But, you know, the, the point is, my friends, that God calls us. We are aliens and strangers in this world. He calls us to live with that mindset, to keep building into what he's building. And he will come and look after what we're doing. He will keep building into what we're doing. He will keep providing into what we need. The Bible says in Matthew 633, Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all the things of pagans rise up early and go to sleep late at night to prefer, to run after. He says he will do that for us. Amen. He will stir someone's heart to come and fit in the, the safety gear, the, the, the stuff in your house, to provide for you. He will do that. He will stir. He will, five years ago, he, this guy could have been working in some job and his, this, these, these sensors went into his garage just waiting for the Glens one day to need them, that they would come. God earmarked them for us. Why? Because he knows we love his kingdom. We know we want to build his kingdom. So he's going to stop. He's going to provide for our family. Father, uh, Father, <laughs> peep, friends, we are nothing special, Dawn and I. Nothing special. We just want to take the word of God at face value and say, Lord, help us outwork this so that we can live this life as you've called us to live it. Amen. Woo! Come on, friends. We can do this. The temptation is there. As, as, as the, the enemy said to Jesus, if you will just bow down to me and worship the things of this world, run after things like the pagans do, rise up early and go to bed late in vain to get things done, do this and worship me and I'll give you all these things. It's a lie. It's a lie. And then Jesus said, it is written, you'll have only one God. We have the Father as our King. Amen. I want to encourage you right now. Father, I thank you for the blessings that you lined up for your people, even watching this, this video or watching me, lis listening to me today, that you would bless them, Father God, that you would, that you would uh, um, help us, Father, overcome fear as we trust you to build a house, as we trust you to, uh, to watch over the city, watch over our household, watch over our children, Lord. Help us, Lord, to reach out and touch those that you prioritize so that you can reach out and touch these that we prioritize in Jesus' mighty name. Bless you guys. Have a great rest of the day. And uh, don't forget, this coming Sunday, the 18th of June, uh, Becoming a Godly Man, Father's Day at Grace Life. We've got a special treat and gifts for the dads. Invite your fathers, invite your sons, invite your brothers, invite your uncles. It's going to be a great, great time. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great rest of the week. Don't forget, also Thursday evening, ladies, go to Grace Life. Go help the ladies with all the gifts that need to be done for the men, surprise for the men. We need, the ladies need your help Thursday evening at Grace Life. Uh, uh, 1353 Bluff Road, Bluff. Otherwise, bless you guys. Have a great, great rest of the day. And we'll see you very soon.